What's up, everyone? It's Mitch from the Two Guys in the Dark podcast, and I am joined by Bobby, the only guy I know who thinks about chili dogs while he's hanging out at your mom's house. You damn right. And speaking of things I like to do on Sundays, nothing beats a brand new episode of Two Guys in the Dark. Oh, tell me more, Daddy. We sit down, discuss life, pop culture, entertainment, and much, much more. So join us weekly as we take to the open road with a turkey burger and some cabbage rolls, right here on the Two Guys in a Dark podcast. All right, uh, I am Big Nick from the Gag on This Podcast, and I am uh, diddling my taint listening to Bleach Brothers. Welcome into the Bleach Brothers podcast. This is B Word, and as usual, I am here it's with Jake. my sidekick. My Ooh, I'm a sidekick now. You're, uh, yeah, sometimes. Which which Robin would you want me to be to your Batman? Oh, that's a good question. You know, originally, when the artist drew Robin, he had a very familiar look. He had those short little green or those green little shorts. Yeah, short shorts. Um, and then he had the white eyes with the black eye, eye bandana thing and all that sort of stuff. And ironically, I thought that Captain America also had a Robin because that's okay. also how they drew Bucky Barnes. Yeah. And I thought that that was pretty interesting. I guess if I were to, if I were to say which Robin you'd be, I think I think you would end up being like Dick Grayson, but not Dick Grayson from the comics. Like I would want you to be Dick Grayson from the Adam West series. Um, and the reason why is because that that guy could not contain his boner when he would record when he would true. be filmed with Catwoman, and I think that that See, would just I, be tremendous. I thought you went with Dick just because the name Dick. I who which one died? Which one got killed by Joker? That's the one I want to be. Uh, that was um, uh, Todd. Um, Todd. Jason Todd. Jason Todd. Yeah, I want to die. Um, see, I'm. I guess I'm more of a. Um, blunt man to your chronic like you know jay and silent yeah. bob i'm your jay yeah obnoxious I that. tuck myself scream at people you know you're a soft and silent type you know but you say you say important shit when it needs to be said but or not you just let me ramble on you are the actor from jay and silent bob i forget what his name is jason muse jason muse but he, and he actually does the intro for our friends at the gray's tap room podcast which is pretty cool yes but he does the um he was in in um, Zach and Miri make a porno. Never seen. And it. It, well, you should. And that is the Jason Muse that you are, because Jason Muse is a amateur porn star, and yeah. he's doing an anal with uh, Katie Morgan, the the actual porn star, but she's she's not a porn star in the movie, and she has a case of the shits, and <laughs> he, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, <laughs> what's the what's the actor's name seth rogan <laughs> seth rogan seth rogan is is on the floor and he is looking up uh recording these guys getting the the penetration angle and yeah. some guy walks into the coffee shop and jason muse you know pulls his dick out because he was startled and shit goes all over seth rogan it was amazing that's amazing that's it's amazing. a good part it's a good part all it's right. actually a pretty I'll decent movie yeah. elizabeth banks in it and i love her elizabeth banks is hot I love Elizabeth Banks. Best Elizabeth Banks movie? Hmm. A uh, Slither. I don't know that I ever saw Slither. She's just hot in that one. She's uh it it's a it's a it's a weird you know what it's about, right? Like slugs no. that come down from another planet and like take over people. I it's don't got know the that guy who that. um who played who's who uh Yondu in uh Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yeah, he's her husband, but like sleeping with her sister, and then like gets infected. So it's it's pretty much a creature feature, but I like it. It's my favorite. I I, I loved Elizabeth Banks from Scrubs though, because remember Scrubs used to be one of my favorite TV shows, and so when she was in that season yeah. four through six, I think love that. Yeah, no, best Elizabeth Banks movie is a uh, is the forty year old virgin when she wants to put the bicycle in her butt. Oh uh, yeah, and that was that's I don't the consider best that her movie though. Me. That's just a quick cameo. But, that's where she's hot. She was in, wasn't she in Spider-Man 2? Yeah. 
She's one of those actresses, she like, was... later on in life, you found out she's in, like, so many fucking things. So, yeah, Elizabeth Banks is one of those people I've always fallen in love with her. Did I ever tell you the time I was supposed to meet her? No. I, maybe not supposed to meet her, but uh, she came into one of the uh, restaurants I was running, and I was in the back, like, doing manager paperwork and stuff, and all the girls were, like... I walked out and saw her walking away from the register and they're like, Oh, she was just here. And I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Cause all the girls knew I had a huge crush on her too. And I was so, I almost chased her down, but that's I just terrible. That was weird. It that's was terrible. terrible. No, I think, I think meeting, meeting famous people is like a weird thing mm-hmm. because depending yeah, we've on had how, that discussion, depending yeah. on how famous they are is one thing. And then another thing is, is like people get intimidated by other people like that. But I don't really think that there should be a reason to be intimidated by somebody who's right. famous or powerful or whatever. But yeah, well, anyway, man, we've got uh, we've got a good rundown here tonight. Um, we haven't had a chance, you and I, really, to discuss some of the things that that we're going to discuss tonight, really in depth. Uh, we we may have hit on it a little bit outside of the podcast, but really, this will be this will be our first impressions to really kind of sit down and have this conversation. Uh, first up on the docket, Secret Invasion. Ugh. We uh, we both had a chance to finish Secret Invasion. Um, I was in it every single week, just like you were. Real quick, what did you like about it? Like, there were some good things about it. So, what did you like about that? It, it was over. Is that that's <laughs> that all that ended. you liked? No, I loved. I loved the intro. I'm one of those. I like. I I miss um, movie intros. Like where you'd get all the, like, mm-hmm. you know, like I think like the last one I really remember besides Guardians of the Galaxy 2, which is one of the my favorite intros to a movie ever. But Spider-Man 2, where, you know, it does the web and it's yeah. going back and forth and saying the people's names. And I don't know. What is that called? Like the screen credits and stuff before the movie? Uh, yeah, it's the, it's the yeah, the, the uh, credits to the movie, basically. Right. I loved that AI drawn. I thought it fit perfectly because it fits I perfectly it with society right now. Yeah. It was every, it was done well. It was creepy. It was done yeah. well because you've seen those AI things, and it was like that fit the show, fucking impeccable. It did. So I loved that. I loved that. It did. I like the look of the scrolls. I like that they killed off people. Um, yeah. in the sense though, it's like like I hated that people were were voting for or hoping or mad that Robin. You know, and I'm going to call her Robin because you know from How I Met Your Mother when she died, and they're like, oh, her arc. It's like, what the fuck did you want her to do? Like, she's essentially a secretary, like, for S.H.I.E.L.D. with a fucking, like, you know, she's the right-hand man. But she's not, like, a like a major, major, major character. So I don't care if she's dead. She's not, but she does have a bigger role in the comics than they gave her in the movies. I know, but they didn't um, in the movies, so it's not like you ever right. built that up. Right. I did find out that, that after this, because, you know, you and I, we watched review videos and all this sort of stuff. They There's a term for it, and I don't know what the term is called off the top of my head, but it's like man it, it's one of those like mansplaining words where basically they kill off the woman it's it has to do with something with a refrigerator like literally it's like they fridged her i think it's called they fridged her because in the comics there was there i don't remember which comic so i'm not even going to try to quote it but in the comics there was a lady character who was introduced to the audience and then was killed and put in a refrigerator and like that was her story arc so it means basically that you'll have a powerful or an intriguing female character that's introduced and then uh, to sub to subvert them for the man's storyline, they will they will fridge them basically. So they I felt like they, they if for if we're going to use that definition, I felt like they fridged her. However, I didn't think that that was a thing before I watched the review video. Um, she does have a pretty good story arc in the comics. Like I, I, I will say that um, she is somebody who is pretty prominent with Shield, but I just don't think that Marvel wants to continue the whole Shield of things right now, um, or ever for that matter. And so maybe it was time to to kind of let her go. So I, I, I do agree with that. I will say I loved probably the first three episodes. I think the first three episodes were impeccable. One of my favorite stories within Marvel or the MCU is Captain uh, Captain America Winter Soldier. We've talked about that at yeah. nauseum here because it has that espionage feel. It has that suspense feel. Um, it's not necessarily action packed, but there's a lot of drama that's happening behind the scenes. And I think that from a storyline perspective that that movie was done impeccably well. And I thought that the first three episodes of Secret Invasion kind of 
implored that, if you will, or embodied that mm-hmm. because it had that espionage feel. You didn't know what was going to happen. You were under suspense. Like the very first episode, they they take the 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 guy from Shield. I don't know why I'm not remembering his name, and like he's dead at the end to find out that he's a scroll. And then mm-hmm. you know now what's going on with Rhodey? Like Rhodey's acting completely weird. I th- I thought that they set it up very very well. I guess this gets, this comes to the point of what didn't you like about Secret Invasion? Well, I, I guess the only other thing I'd say before I get into that was I, I I thought the acting was good. A lot of the acting was actually really well done, like by the actors. I mean, they had really good people in roles who also a lot of them have been doing this role forever. But I felt right. I felt that was on point, and they can't control how shitty the story was written, in my ascent. Because you you had three great intro episodes and it's like you have a chance for a really cool story and then they've done what marvel has done over the last two years and just went okay formulaic now let's do this and then also we have to make somebody so fucking powerful because that's the problem you've upped the ante so high now so how do you you know, go to the next level. It's it's sort of like, uh, and I I know this comparison. I don't know if it's going to work for a lot of people, but the X Games, right? It mm-hmm. used to be the best trick ever was the backflip, right? And then it turned into you have to do a backflip with another trick now to because uh, how do you top that, right? Because I, right. I don't know if you remember when I used to watch a lot of like the the super cross like Moto X, right, where they do the tricks and stuff, and like the Lazy Boy and Travis Pastrana, they'd come up with all those tricks, right? And then once they did the backflip, it's like, well, now we're done. And so once you've done the major, the major big bads that, that can kill almost anybody and the, and the, you keep raising the stakes with heroes getting more powerful and villains getting more powerful, like what's the next step? Right. And so that I think really bothered everybody. Cause I mean, you look at, I I mean, if we could just spoil this out the gate at the ending when they gave her both of them every fucking power. Gaia and, and the other, and the, the, the villain, Gravik. Yeah. So when they gave it to Gaia and Gravik, it's essentially the fact that you, it it was just stupid. Cause one, all you need is Captain Marvel's powers. And it's like you give them everybody's fucking powers. Like it's just, I don't know. It was ridiculous. Cause now we have a character walking around that's like, the most ungodly unfathomable thing you're ever going to have. And it's bothersome. Yeah. The two characters that we, we didn't mention in here. And I just hear, uh, Ben from Jake and Ben day, uh, just yelling in the background. Maria Hill was the character that was killed. Um, Robin, we called her cause how I met your mother. And then Everett Everett Ross, uh, was the other shield agent that was killed in the very, in the very beginning. So, um, I, feel like I should clarify that. I, I agree with you, dude. The, I thought that there was really good things that, that they could have done with this. I thought the storyline was good, how they were creating a super scroll. If you remember when the super scroll was was um, introduced, it was actually introduced in the Fantastic Four, and the scroll received powers from each of the Fantastic Four. So he had invincibility. He had um, the elongation of or the, the stretchiness of, of Reed Richards. He had the being able to turn yourself on fire and turning yourself into stone, all that sort of stuff. And that became how he be, how the Super Scroll became a big villain for the Fantastic Four. And initially, the the Super or the, the Scroll um, bloodlines that they had access to was they had access to Groot. They had access to the Extremis. Um, uh, Korg, they had they had everybody yeah yeah they they, they had all the, all these sort of things which initially they had the four which kind of represented those fantastic four powers however it all of a sudden we're introduced to this harvest program and mm-hmm. it's like okay wait so t- talk to me about the timeline here because you have scrolls literally fighting with the avengers apparently during um during endgame and mm-hmm. Then you have scrolls going and capturing blood or DNA samples from from the fight, from the from the area that they were fighting in. But at no point did any of the scrolls turn on you at this point. And all of a sudden right. you have scrolls that are absolutely against Nick Fury. Like there's not to me, there wasn't enough time to try to figure all of this stuff out. Probably the worst thing for me. In all of this, aside from Gaia having just tremendous powers, I think that they're going to have to retcon that a little bit. Just side note, I think that they're probably going to say, oh, well, her her exposure to the Super Scroll thing only allows 
a certain amount of time for her to have those powers yeah. or some sort of explanation yeah. to where she's not the most powerful because I don't think that you can do that because she's basically a god at that point. However, uh, I I didn't like Rhodey's character at all. Like I was fine no. with Rhodey being a scroll. I hated the storyline behind it. Like I felt like the first three episodes really created this dynamic storyline. I mean, we're getting backstory on Nick Fury. We never got, we're getting, you know, stories about his upbringing. We're all of a sudden he has a wife. We get introduced to her. There's just a lot of really cool things that we're learning about Samuel L. Jackson's character here. And then on the back end of the series, dude, it's just, it's fucking terrible. Like I just, it just dropped every single time. And not only that, but the, the runtime dropped in every episode. Like when you're getting 30 minutes episodes for episode four and five, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, well, they're saving on, they're saving that time up for episode six. Episode six was 38 minutes. I think it was, yeah. it was just terrible, dude. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to take away from that. I, I just, it felt like it was extremely lazy. I realized that they filmed this during COVID, which could explain some of the, why character yeah but i'm getting sick of that excuse i'm getting sick of I, that I, fucking dude excuse, i'm with dude. you there i'm with you there 100 percent. they reshot this several times so yeah because it sucked it wasn't because they couldn't get stuff done yeah right and so that's why i just don't understand like why why they continually drop the ball i will tell you this dude and we're going to talk a little bit more marvel in this episode but marvel has really done things backward when it comes into green green lighting movies because traditionally in hollywood Somebody writes a script, whoever that somebody is, right? whether it's an independent writer, whether it's a hired writer with an idea or whatever, somebody writes a script. Then the studio house will purchase the script uh, to be able to, to prepare it to become a movie. Then they find a director or, and producer and the whole staff to be able to do it. They do storyboards. They do a lot of different planning and stuff to be able to get that going. And then eventually they end up filming the movie and shooting it and producing it and all that sort of stuff. And that takes quite a while for, for most movies. I mean, we're talking like a decade plus for a lot of movies just in general. Right. And with Marvel, they've really come out and said, well, no, here's our next five years or four years or two years of releases and all of these things. And what's the, what that's done in my opinion is that it's, they've had to bring in writers to write, what they want, not necessarily what should be, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, they force everything through. And we see that a lot through, you know, the different CGI and graphics and stuff. And it's just really hard for me as a fan to kind of see that because I feel like they're just wasting characters, to be honest with you. And it, it's, it's tough, dude. They have a lot of throwaway. I mean, we've talked about the villain problem. We've talked about, I mean, because as you're saying about the writing, it's like you're writing for five years down the road. So I think there there could be that that remorse too, or or anger. I don't know what you want to call it from the people doing the script, being like, okay, I want to write a script about fucking the scrolls, right? Oh, but I have to connect yeah. it to the next six films, and I yep. have to connect it to yep. the the last six films as well, and so I have to write. And I'm, I understand that's their job, and you're doing that. But there is something to be said when you're trying to do, like, for an example, Thor Love and Thunder and do the Gore the God Butcher series. And it's like, you, but you have yeah. to tie in every other fucking movie and make it a part of that. That's why I think we've we've right. sort of enjoyed uh, so what DC does in the sense where not everything's a connected universe. But two, what Marvel has done with certain properties where the one the reason I loved Guardians of the Galaxy 3, um, it, it felt like it was, it was its own movie. It didn't need... Yeah, you didn't yeah. have to sit there and go, oh, I didn't watch all 22 films. I watched all three Guardians of the Galaxy and I'm pretty much caught up. Like, yeah, there's things that happened in between there and stuff that you need to know. I'm not denying that. However, for the casual fan like my wife, when she went, she's like, good movie. Really enjoyed it. I didn't need to know every little tidbit. You filled me in a little bit. and I, I, I'm still good to go. And I think th I think that's part of the problem. I just I, I feel it was lazy writing. I feel it was formulaic and i feel like they just can get away with not caring as much about these characters anymore and i think it's because it's almost like they get a pass because they've done so well for so long that it's like well if we fuck that one up 
I mean, we fucked Thor one up, we fucked Thor two up, but Thor three did great. They have they have that rebuttal chance, which is a sad feeling. It's a sad feeling that they can they and they can bring anybody back. They can essentially do the variant timeline or the the time travel timeline, or oh, let's just make another multiverse like jump into this one and that retcons this or changes that. They do that all the time, and it's really frustrating as a fan, you know, looking at it like okay. Why, why are, what are we going to do now after, after she walks away with all those powers? And as, as we said, you, 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 you said it, you, na- you hit the nail on the head. They're going to retcon it somehow. And I think we're all going to be pissed off when it's retconned. Oh, I agree with you. I think that, the, I think that not only are they going to retcon it, but it's going to, it's going to, let me back up. You said, you said something that hit the nail on the head too, where people have to create a, storyline that takes place over like six movies like six films right and so with what happens with that is case in point look at gamora in infinity war gamora dies in infinity war right for james gunn's story that he was trying to do with throughout the guardians of the galaxy that went absolutely against what he was trying to do and right. he wasn't a part of that storyline to be able to do that so then let's go back into secret invasion as an example or or any other property and and now you're you're introducing characters and story points that don't make sense so as an example we were teased that president ritson who was the president in in in, uh, secret invasion that he made a trade deal with the asgardians and now at the end of secret invasion he has declared war on all aliens on the planet like, does right. that include the Asgardians or is this just scrolls? Like, I think it creates more questions than answers. And the problem is, is when you have this many properties and this many storylines that you're trying to juggle, it just creates it creates a bad storyline or at least holes or gaps in the story where fans like us have the opportunity to critique And to say, well, why is this? And I think when you start looking at some of the comic book stories, whether it be Civil War or whether it be the Infinity Saga or whether it be some of these other ones, a lot of the writers that contributed to that overall saga, that overall storyline, they communicated with each other to say, hey, my characters that I'm writing are doing this. How does that fit within the overall story arc? And I don't really see that Kevin Feige is taking that role anymore where he's directing it or at least directing the overall storyline instead you can call it lazy writing i think it's more or less bad organization where some of these things are taking place like we have kang going across what five movies right now assuming that his domestic violence thing continues like what happens with this like the the original storyline in quantum mania as an example was that uh kang was going to be killed off and how do you explain that? Like how how when you when you go through all of that, how do you explain that Kang's killed off by Ant Man? You know right. what I mean? Like if you have an Avengers level villain, it should take the Avengers level or the Avengers themselves to, to take him the out. Not a not a single character. Unit, yeah. 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 And so I, I, I have an issue with the way that Marvel's going about the storytelling, but this is this is something that we can beat a dead horse over for a while. So let me let me transition and ask this question to you. Well, can I ask you I, before you do so that, can I ask you a question real quick? on yeah. Feige? Do you feel like he's being yeah. pushed out or he just really doesn't fucking care anymore? I don't think that he's involved in the same manner that he was before. And you see this as far as like, even at the end of She-Hulk, when you have the Kevin machine at the end, like that AI or whatever it was. Yeah, the stupid thing. It was almost like true to form that you have this guy who she's consulting in the form of a robot where he's basically just saying, oh, well, we could do it like this or we could do it like this and just entirely changes the ending. I think one of the things that set Kevin Feige apart was he had an overall vision of what Avengers was. And then he brought in the right team to start talking about it, like the second Avengers and the third Avengers and introducing uh, characters and that sort of stuff. And really, since Shang-Chi, there's not been a good introduction to a character at all, at all. Maybe America Correct. Chavez, but she wasn't really like introduced in Doctor Strange, right? So it's not been that great. But speaking of introducing characters, this is kind of where I was going to go. Rank these for me. Best to worst or worst to best, you tell me how they are. WandaVision, 
The Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel, She Hulk, and Secret Invasion. Oh fuck. Um for me it's Moon Knight, Loki, WandaVision, Hawkeye. Fuck, and then <laughs> then the shit comes, right? Um Yeah. Fuck. I guess I would do Captain America, She Hulk, and Secret Invasion. That's it, right? Yeah. I think for me, I would probably do Loki. <sighs> See, this is where it's tough. I think uh, for me, I think Loki is number one. I was very impressed with Moon Knight, but I think I would do Loki mm-hmm. number one, Moon Knight number two, WandaVision three, Hawkeye four, Miss Marvel five, She Hulk oh, six, and yeah. Secret Invasion last. What really pisses me off is that I thought that Secret Invasion was going to be the best of the bunch. Right. That that's what pissed me off. I I really had right. had high hopes for that. So, well, let me uh, let me ask you one more question, and then uh, we'll take a little break here. Um, as far as Marvel properties that are coming up, or at least just generic thoughts on the MCU, uh, are you are you excited for anything that that that's that's currently on the docket? maybe uh on on the disney plus forum right now so loki's coming up we know that there's other disney plus properties that are coming out are you excited for any of those or have these kind of put a bad taste in your mouth honestly nothing um deadpool 3 is probably the only thing in the sense of i know what to expect with that and it sort of could be all over the place and doesn't have to totally hit the mark um with the properties, I, I would be more excited if they were doing more stuff like Werewolf by Night, which was the rumor, like, you know, just its own little standalone yeah. quick film. It's still connected, yeah. but on its own. Um, but so, they've sort of put a bad taste in my mouth, too. But I also I don't know where it's going. Like, I feel like right. they don't they don't know where it's going. And, and so it's starting to bother me in the sense of like, OK, well, what are we doing here and how are these characters going to connect mm-hmm. and who are we going to put there? I, I do want to I do want to make one little quick point, though, is that, you know. We sit here and talk about the MCU and how all and DC films and all these all these film studios for always fucking up. We do have to remember that comic books fuck it up all the time. There are so many times I've yeah. read a story and it's going so well. And then it's like they botched the ending. They couldn't, as you would say, stick the landing. Right. And that happens all the time. Yeah. And some of these storylines that they're doing have that fucking problem where it's like they're writing and writing. You're following. You're following. You're like, this is great. This is great. And then the ending happens. You're like, that's it. That's how that happens. That guy dies. Yeah. That's who did it. And so, you know, comics are also to blame on this because like maybe Kevin Feige's doing that troll job of doing, hey, we're just going to give you what the comics have given us for years and do a crappy ending just like they do or kill this guy off. And then, oh, we're going to bring him back anyways. That is a thing that we need to address as fans that there are not Marvel comics is not the end all be all and every storyline is great. That's why we can pick and choose right. and say this one was the better story. This was the better story. Arc. This was the best Robin character. This was the best Spider-Man iteration. This was the best artist. MCU is trying. They have one shot at it, though. They have one shot to get it right. And they've been fucking it up lately and just not hitting it on point. I'll tell you, in, in, and we've talked about this before. And again, this is probably going to be a dead horse here. But if they would have stopped it in game. I just said, you know what? That that's a phenomenal series. That that was done very very well. I would have been able to overlook things like Thor: The Dark World. Would have been would have been able to look look past things like Iron Man three. You know, some of some of their least um, least strong properties within that 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 whole story. Now I feel like, aside from like Shang Chi, and Really, that's it. I, I I don't know that there's anything that's absolutely strong that's coming out. I mean, I I'm kind of intrigued by the Marvels, but I'm also curious because I feel like the propensity is there to shit the bed. Like you and I watched the entirety of WandaVision. We know who Phot- Photon or Spectrum is, whatever she's going to go by. People who go to the theater, this this might be their first introduction to her. Same thing with Miss Marvel. Um, now, how do you address the 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 war on Earth with the with the aliens and the scrolls? And do you just neglect it in Miss Mar or, or in the Marvels? Like, there's some questions here, right? So, I, I guess for me, I I think, and I think we've said this before. I think I would much prefer stories that connect and do a good job connecting 
even if it's one or two a year rather than like eight a year, eight different properties a year, because I feel like we're getting to the point where it's oversaturated. We're legitimately losing really good villains like Gore the God Butcher. And yes, you can bring them back with this variant and time travel and this and that. But do we want to do that? Like, is that something that we want to do? I feel like we should just, if it's dead, let it die. I don't feel like we need to go back and get it because the other thing is, is that for us, for us comic book fans and for the fans of the films, whether it be DC or Marvel, if you have a phenomenal casting, if you have somebody like, you know, Henry Cavill for, for Superman, or you have somebody like Ben Affleck for Batman or Robert Downey Jr. for Iron Man, et cetera, so forth, Chris Evans for, for, for Captain America, do you really want to see that recast? Because right. sometimes the casting's not as well. I'll, I'll argue on, on, until I'm blue in the face. I liked Don Cheadle. I liked Terrence Howard better. Now, I'm not saying that Terrence Howard would have been able to carry it. I'm not saying that he would have been a better performance. I'm just saying I liked him embodying the character more than I liked Don Cheadle. That's, you know, here we are. So right. I think Don Cheadle's done a good job. I just think that Terrence Howard would have done a better job. So, well, anyway, man, let's take a real quick break and uh, kind of sort this out behind the scenes, and we'll be right back. Bleach Bros Podcast is proud to align itself with Jerky Pro, a beef jerky manufacturer established by military and paramilitary veterans. Available in three ounce or one pound bags with great flavors such as honey glazed, teriyaki, red hot, apple cinnamon, original, peppered, sweet barbecue, and if you're ballsy enough, nuclear. Be sure to use our promo code to get some of the best jerky on the market. Use Bleach Bros 5, all lowercase, to take advantage of this offer today. Welcome back to the Bleach Brothers podcast. B-Word's bringing up a lot of good points. The one thing that I found, and maybe I'm missing them, and I, maybe, I mean, all, I, maybe I've gotten used to watching YouTube videos for Easter eggs and shit. I don't know if that's how you're doing it these days. I didn't find a lot in Secret Invasion, but it's funny because you were bringing up Super Scrolls. And how they were mm-hmm. started by the Fantastic Four. And I want to get into um, rumors about the, the, well, the cast just came out. It just dropped. And it, you actually sent it to me. And I want to talk about like it's what you think of it. It's not quite official yet. Right. But it's not what you quite think official of yet. what the rumor is. And then also the rumors of who the villain could be and the storyline and stuff like that. So what do you think so far of the casting that they, that is rumored to be out there? So here's the rumored cast. We have Matt Smith, who currently plays Damon Targaryen in um, in House of the Dragon. Um, he's also been Doctor Who. Um, he was also he also played Prince Philip in the the Crown. I want to say, which actually was a pretty it was, that was actually a better series than I anticipated. Um, he's he's rumored to be Reed Richards. You've got Vanessa Kirby, who most recently was in the the most recent uh, Mission Impossible film but she has also she's also got a number of acting credits underneath her belt um ironically she was also played um queen elizabeth's sister in the crown um she was she's a very good actress uh joseph quinn uh who people will will remember from uh stranger things uh he was the the metal the metalhead kid the one that died at the end Uh, hopefully that's not a spoiler for anybody um but the most metal ever music scene he was the one playing the guitar and then we have uh, Eben, I think is his first name, uh, Moss Bacharach. Uh, most, most recently, at least where I know him from, uh, I know he was in the Punisher series as uh, as Microchip um, or Micro or whatever it was. But mo- most recently, he's in The Bear. He plays the cousin, the older cousin um, in, the, in the TV show The Bear. Though That's the rumored uh, casting. So Matt Smith as Reed, Reed Richards, Vanessa Kirby as Sue, Sue Storm, um, Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm, and then Eben Moss back rack as the th- as uh, th- uh, the thing. So that being the case, uh, I I actually uh, you know I I'm not sure what how I feel about Matt Smith. I I don't want to discount anything that he has because he's absolutely talented as an actor. Absolutely talented as an actor. I just thought that there was other candidates available for Reed Richards, but I'm willing to give him a chance because I do think that he's that, that good of an actor. Uh, Vanessa Kirby. I'm, I'm all on board for that. I think that number one, she's not necessarily as big as some of the other actor actresses that they were um, entertaining with, with this, this role, but she's, I think she's going to be phenomenal at Sue storm, assuming that that's made um, made final. 
Um, I like the pick for Johnny Storm. I was actually expecting um, Thor's brother. I don't remember what his name is. The the Liam Hemsworth. Liam Hemsworth. I was actually expecting him to actually join the Fantastic Four team, which I thought would have been kind of cool. And then the thing, really, he's he's going to be made of stone. Like I think you can almost put anybody in there. But as far as the actor goes, he's a pretty good actor. I, I don't have a problem with him at all. Um, but what are your thoughts? So I don't like Matt Smith casting. I'd rather see him as um, Doctor Doom. I think he and I, it's not just because he he played such a great villain in House of Dragon, but he plays a great fucking villain. And I think he would be a better Doctor Doom. He has that look. He can. I think he could pull that role off better. Um, I know we all said that John Krasinski was the dream dream casting ever, but I think there's other people out there that could do a good job. Um, if I rank them, it would be Vanessa Kirby then Joseph Quinn, then Evan Moss, and then Matt Smith, like top to bottom, like how I think they did a good job with it. And it's Kirby. I'm on board. Totally, totally for that. I, I It took me a little while for um, Joseph Quinn as Storm, just because I was looking forward to Hemsworth brother. Um, and I just, I don't know if he's going to come off as cocky enough, if that makes more sense. Like, I don't think he's like, I, I imagine my Johnny Storm being almost like the, the guy in high school football that you know is ripped and just just sort of a dickhead um and I, and I had a problem with Evan Moss just in the sense that I knew that he was microchip however I know the thing stone but are are you going to give us the backstory to where he's before he was stone or are we just getting straight thing and I think that's going to matter because that's one of those things that we never forget like a Ralph Boner moment right like we have a hard time as fans yeah. disconnecting knowing that guy was already in here that guy already did this how can he be two people at once um and I know they can retcon and do all that stuff. So if they give us thing straight stone, like out the gate, all for it. I think he'll do a great job. If you don't, I'm going to be one of those people that has a little bit of a problem with it. So the Matt Smith as Dr. Doom, my dream casting for Dr. Doom is Killian Murphy. And it has been for a long time. Killian Murphy recently has been in Oppenheimer. He played Oppenheimer in Oppenheimer. Uh, he was in, um, he's been in almost every uh, Nolan film that's out there. Um, I, I think that he would be a phenomenal doom. And, and it, I, candidly, like you've said before, the, the villain casting is so important, but I don't think we're going to see Dr. Doom in the Fantastic Four film. As a matter of fact, the rumors right now are that they're going to introduce Galactus. And the big rumor is, is that the Fantastic Four is going to be set in the 1960s, which will pay off Dr. Strange's uh, comment to Reed Richards in the multiverse of madness, where he says, didn't you guys chart in the sixties, um, which could be construed as the Fantastic Four band that was in the sixties, but it's also, the Fantastic Four was primarily set in the 60s. They were introduced in the 60s, all that sort of stuff. What's your thoughts on potentially having Galactus in the MCU so quickly, number one, but number two with the Fantastic Four and not necessarily as an Avengers-level villain? Two things I have a problem with. One, you can't have that high of a villain. I mean, uh, mind you, uh, this is a villain I don't think you kill right out the gate. Um, if you do, then there's a real big fucking problem. Uh, two, they don't actually defeat him. Three, there'll be another smaller villain on the side. Marvel always tends to do that when you introduce a team or a member or whatever that you have them fighting somebody and then something bigger and bad comes along. Uh, four, fuck hippies. I hate the 60s. So that gives me a problem. Like, how are we going to do this? What universe are we in now? Like, I I that I, I had that problem with um, uh, bl- uh, Mar- the Mar- Captain Marvel, right? Like, it was set in the 90s. And so you're having to time travel back and then act like these things happened and that people are aware of it in this universe. But then, like, all the time things happen, people are, aren't aware that that happened. Does that make sense? Like, you're looking at it like, oh, we didn't know there were superheroes. Oh, we didn't know there were aliens. Oh, but scrolls have been here all the time. Oh, and there's an Eternals thing. And oh, there's this. And that that's becoming very tiresome, too, of how you're fitting this together. So, of course, I know we're going to go in another universe. No, we're going to go in another world. And you're going to have one of the biggest baddest villains of all fucking time come in yes you're it's an avenger level threat and it's probably going to lead to everybody teaming up and doing that but how do you introduce the team on their first go go against that that have been like introducing iron man movie and then having him go against thanos right out the gate i don't see it yeah i would agree with that i think that uh, in in the fantastic four comics there's a, a place called the negative zone that I think is probably going to be used, but it's in the MCU. I think it'll probably be the, the quantum realm uh, because we've already been introduced into the quantum realm. It's a really good expl- explainer 
Um, you, you deal with the quantum realm and Loki. I mean, there, there's just a lot of ways that you can tie that in. And I think that that's probably how and uh, if the Fantastic Four is a 1960s set premise for the storyline, I imagine the negative zone is going to transport them to, to modern day. And that's probably going to answer that as, as far as that question goes. I agree with you as far as as far as Galactus goes. I think Galactus is a big character. I would say if they introduce the human version of Galactus first, because Galactus is actually a humanoid uh, person. He was human first. He has a backstory. He has a storyline. I think if they introduce something like that, I think that that could eventually help with that, I think. But if they're going to do big Galactus, like, candidly, I would kind of prefer that Galactus just consumed the earth that the fantastic four are on. Like that's just part of what he, he ends up consuming and he digests it out and whatever. And then they end up coming into some, some other realm within the, you know, kind of like a Deadpool thing where they, they come in through uh, these other variant things and they come in that way. Will that happen? I don't know. Do I trust it? I don't know. Um, I, I like Galactus as a character. He's obviously a great villain. He's one of the best villains in the in in Marvel Comics. I just don't. I first off, I don't want them to kill Galactus in, in the Fantastic Four because I do think that he has the Avengers level threat that we're talking about. But I think that from the storyline perspective, if he's the side villain, as a as an example, the humanoid version of Galactus is the side villain. And you get that storyline, and then he he he's banished, or he goes wherever and becomes Galactus. I think that that would be something that's really cool that we have not had with a villain sans Loki um, to give us that backstory and really give us the character development to have us be able to bond with them. Because I think that they could have done a better job with that with Thanos, even um, as an example. They could have showed us more of him on Titan and more of him growing up and whatever uh, to to get that in there. But as far as Galactus being a part of the storyline, I don't know necessarily right now if I'm comfortable with Galactus as a part of the storyline. I would hope that they don't fuck it up, but I don't I don't know that if, I, if I trust them to not fuck it up at this point, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, that's my biggest fear is that you're going to have what Marvel does and almost make Galactus feel like a throwaway character. I mean, we've seen that with MODOK. We've seen that with we've seen that with so many villains in the sense of like they can make him a joke. I mean, that, that all started with Iron Man uh, 3. Or was it Iron Man? Yeah. yeah. Was it Iron Man 3 or 2 with uh, the Mandarin? Where it was such a bullshit moment where he was an actor. And you're just like, really? Number like, three. that's what you did? Yeah. It was the one with, three with the Extremist. I think Extremist yeah, was three. three. Yeah. Yeah. Because Whiplash was two with um, Mickey Rourke. But the thing is, is that yeah. you have you have you have these people that or you have the writers that bring these characters in and pretty much go ha ha he's a piece of crap like let's just make it a joke like galactus could come in and then all of a sudden it's a guy that went to toys r us and bought all the armor and then went out there and acted like he had all these powers and it's like i'm getting sick of that too and so you, you, the funny thing is you want to give us a level of heroes and say they're on this pedestal and then they're going up and matching wits and powers and everything against this villain. And then the villain's been smoking mirrors the whole time. No pun intended of Mysterio. But you know what I mean? Right. It's like it wasn't even real the whole time. It's really bothersome and tiresome. Right. Let, let's pivot real quick to the next next property coming out. And we both we both alluded that or not the next one, but one that we were very excited for. Uh, and I know I am. I believe you are is Deadpool three. Um I want to know why you're excited, what you're expecting, maybe some rumors and stuff like that. But like, what what do you think of this film and how it's going to come out? So first and foremost, man, the Deadpool character has always been fantastic, whether it's he's been in, in print form in the comics or whether it's been actually within within the Fox universe. I mean, he was terrible in in uh, Wolverine origins. Uh, he was done so poorly, which I think is why I really want to see him get together with Wolverine again. The the storyline at the end of Deadpool 2, he ends up with Cable's time traveling device, which I think is just so unique and so in, intuitive how they came up with that storyline, whether it was forward thinking, considering where the MCU was going or whatever. Um, it, they, he is confirmed to have that time traveling device, which is going to be his reason to go from universe to universe or, or you know, whatever that looks like. Um, 
I love that they're including the to- the TVA, the Time Variance Authority. I like how Miss Minutes is actually going to be in it. Apparently, Owen Wilson's character is also going to be in it, whether it's a cameo role or, or whether it's something else. Um, obviously, the Wolver- or, or uh, Hugh Jackman is in it as Wolverine, and I think that the team up between Ryan Reynolds and, and Hugh Jackman is really what's going to make this done very, very well. As far as some things that are pretty well confirmed, we've, it, it is confirmed that some of the Fox X-Men will be involved, namely uh, Famke, or, uh, Famke um, I don't remember her, her name, but um, she was the, the Phoenix in the original one, Storm from the original one, Halle Berry, um, Fam, Famke Jensen is her name. Um, also, you have uh, Professor X is going to come back, Magneto is supposed to come back. Um, I, and so you are going to have some of these characters. Additionally, the rumor has it that they're going to go to the 838 universe, which is the universe that is uh, displayed in in Doctor Strange Quantum or uh, uh, Multiverse of Madness. And I think that they're going to deal with um, the Scarlet Witches basically killing everybody in that universe and however they deal with that. But I think that the, I think the universe flipping is going to be pretty cool. Uh, the set photos have already shown that it's almost like a Deadpool kills the Fox Marvel universe. They have the 20th century Fox logo out there. It looks all, all crumbled and everything. Um, overall, man, it looks pretty fucking cool. I'm, I, I'm so excited for this. Ryan Reynolds, I trust in as far as the storyline goes, as well as the performance. Same thing with Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman's a phenomenal actor as well. And this is going to be really cool. I think if I were to put a wish out there that I wish something would happen, I wish Scarlet Witch and the and the Phoenix, the, the Dark Phoenix, actually meet face to face in this and they have some sort of um, battle that happens because I, I do want them to kind of pay off uh, the house of M storyline and somehow make that a part of the X-Men movies or the X-Men storyline that they're bringing in here. Um, but that would probably be my biggest wish. Uh, what about you, man? I'm excited for um, Wolverine and Deadpool to team up just because Ryan Reynolds and Hugh, I think are like buddies in real life too. So it's almost like that buddy coming. It makes me get excited for it in the sense, like what I wanted with uh, Captain America winter soldier. Not not the movie, but like when they did uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, the TV series, what I thought or the Disney Plus series, what I thought it was going to be. And it didn't come to fruition. Like, I'm really excited to see those two interact on screen together. Uh, I mean, pretty much all the rumors I've seen is just who's coming back is what cast and who they're going to kill off or whatever. Right. But um, I'm I'm excited to see what they're going to do and how they're going to combine these universes and stuff, because essentially Deadpool is that character, too. I can just give the middle finger to everything if he wants to. It's going to be still yeah. rated R. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be the fight scenes. We're going to get rumors of like things that happen. Like I, one of the rumors that I'm excited for is that Hulk and Wolverine are going to fight. And that's, you know, one yeah. of the greatest comics like uh, against each other. That'll be a good fucking time. Um, you know, and just just the whole variant, poss- not variant possibility, but just people coming back and being casted in like if they bring Olivia Munn back as Psylocke I mean that stuff like that's fun and cool and it's sort of like one of my favorite yeah. things about Doctor Strange House of Madness like we got some of those dream castings that we never would have gotten just for that quick scene of like mm-hmm. bringing Professor X back getting John Krasinski in there and you know seeing that council like things like that are going to be the exciting because I think that we've gotten to the point where they've tried to interconnect too much and we've already bitched about an MCU enough but this is a chance for it to be almost like a breather. Like, okay, we can have Cy- Cyclops come in from the, the X-Men universe and we can kill him off in five seconds. Nobody's really going to care because it's a send off. Yeah. It's yeah. like a fuck you send off. Yeah. And that's how Deadpool feels to me that it's just going to be a big fuck you send off to a lot of things to close a lot of chapters and finally un Ralph Boner a lot of situations. But that's the best character to do it too. You can't do that with other yeah. characters in the MCU. You can't do that with Captain America. You can't do that with Iron Man. There maybe are a set few that you might be able to pull it off with like Ant-Man maybe, maybe the Gardens of the Galaxy if they hit like a time hole and stuff. But I mean, other than that, there's really no other character in in the scene right now today that they would be able to pull that off with. And that, I think, is the thing I'm most excited about, that they're finally going to fix or give the wave goodbye to people that it's like, okay, we acknowledge the Fox universe was there. We acknowledge the shitty Fantastic Four film. Let's move forward. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you there. And I I do want to see some crossover with the Fantastic Four whether it be like a like a Chris Evans cameo uh something like that I I wouldn't even mind if they were to bring in like Wesley Snipes Blade 
as an example. I think that that would just be really cool. I don't know that they're going to have the budget to bring in everybody. But if, for instance, you did have Scarlet Witch come in um, or even Doctor Strange as they're bouncing through the different portals to go from from world to world, you have, you know, that cameo scene. I think that that would be really, really cool. I have a I have a lot of high hope on Scarlet Witch joining just because of her intertwining with the X-Men already in her storyline, in her background, because she's the daughter of Magneto, um, all that sort of stuff. I would really like to see that. There was also a rumor that Ralph Boner uh, is, uh, so Quicksilver is actually going to be in it. And his battle kind of with the, it's almost going to be like a Flash like what they did with the Flash, where the Flash, when he was fighting Reverse Flash or whatever that, what well, wasn't Reverse Flash, but but Flash in the future, the the variant Flash in the future, where they're going to have some sort of fight, and Deadpool is going to win, and it's going to send Quicksilver into the uh, uh, Wandavision thing, and he's going to completely forget his identity, hence becoming Ralph Boner. If they were to do something like that, I think that that would be cool because again, that's kind of retconning some things. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. I'm really excited for it. I'll be there opening night 100%. It's going to be something that I think I'm really going to enjoy. I, I actually trust the process in this film. Um, but but to kind of clean this up, man, with some other films that, that are coming out. So the Marvels is coming out later this year. We've got Deadpool 3, the beginning of next, or at least the middle of next. That leaves three final films for phase four. You've got Captain America, Brave New World. Thunderbolts and Blade. Blade has not been filmed yet. My understanding is is that they've rewritten the script a few times. That might be one of those ones that's on forever delay right now. Are you excited for any of those potentially? I was excited for Blade until I heard how many rewrites they're going to do, and then now I have the fear that the character is never going to be done right. Um, mm. Thunderbolts would be number two in the sense of I'm excited for the characters that they could introduce and like that team, but also with the way Marvel has a villain problem and either they kill them or they make them good somehow and still almost redeemable is sort of an issue because how are they going to coexist and do their thing? Um, and then four or the next one is, is the Marvels. And just in the sense of here's the thing. I didn't love Miss Marvel. It wasn't for me. I didn't love Captain Marvel. I also don't like this storyline. It just sort of, and from what I've seen from the trailer, I could be totally wrong, but it just doesn't feel as important. It just feels like, hey, we have these characters. We need to use them, continue it. It almost feels like the throwaway film. I don't know how it's going to connect. And I could be, like I said, I could be totally wrong about all this. But when you're looking at the slate, and you see Deadpool 3 coming out. I mean, I think everybody's most excited about that. And you see Thunderbolts, and we know where those characters come from and the storylines they have and sort of the backstory of what they want to do to each other. And then we know Blade had some small connections at the end of the Eternals. We know where he can go, especially Werewolf by Night and how they're going to that supernatural realm that way now instead of yeah. just the, you know, the, su- uh, the sci-fi realm that they did, the galactic realm. With the Marvels, it's like we've, we've almost finished the galactic realm. That's how it almost feels like we've expanded so far. We've killed off some of the major ones. Like, where are we going next with it? And so it feels like it's almost out of place. Like, unless it's going to have an Easter egg to the Fantastic Four to introduce the next phase. That's cool. But out of all of them, I'm the least excited just in that that reason. Uh, I'm I'm excited for Blade, but I'm hesitant. And the reason why I'm excited is because you do have the Black Knight that, that was in Eternals. And he crosses over quite a bit with um with with blade um but more importantly in secret invasion they kind of created the excalibur with the mi6 and that's a british avengers if you will and and blade was a part of that so there there could be something uh that comes out of there um so i'll agree with you on all those last question here so as far as the disney plus properties for for phase five we've got loki season two coming out i think i'm quite i think i'm more excited for that then I'll probably let on on the podcast just because I, I really enjoyed how Loki was. But then we've got Echo, which is a continuation of Hawkeye. We have Iron Heart, which Ryan Coogler is actually coming to direct the actual series. So we'll, I hope that that's not a waste of his time because I, I really appreciate him as a director. Agatha Coven of Chaos. And then we also have What If. I don't really want to talk about all those. I just want to announce those. But the other, but the other series that I think you and I might enjoy or at least look forward to potentially 
is Daredevil. Some of the some of the rumors with that is we're going to have the Punisher back. Uh, Wilson Fisk is going to be running for like mayor or something. He's going to become mayor of New York. Uh, that's the kingpin. Um, they're they're talking about bringing in some characters for that. It's also like eighteen episodes. I hope that they're eighteen hour long episodes or at least you know some sort of substance there and not like thirty eight minutes for each episode. Um, but what what's your temperature on that man? Are you looking forward to the Daredevil uh, Born Again series? Uh- I am um, just more for reprising roles and it's a great storyline and it's, it's more let's finish this. Like it's, I know it's not totally a continuation, but like, I don't know. I just, I felt out of all of them, like it started the Netflix series is right. And we never got that finalization of it. Like it sort of just felt like the snap, like they're all gone. Goodbye. And so I think it for that yep. reason too, but um, I don't know. I'm 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 super pumped for it. I'm I'm a, I, I would love if they brought everybody back, and they just we've we've talked about that before, uh, yeah. but I don't think it'll ever happen. I don't think that they're going to bring everybody back. They're bringing a lot of people back, so I'm I'm positive on that. There's talk though that it's going to intertwine with Spider Man, which I would love. I would absolutely love for Spider-Man to be intertwined with Daredevil um, because at the end of, or at least before the the SAG after strike at the end of Daredevil was going to be when Spider-Man four premiered. And there was talk that they were actually going to have either uh, Daredevil cameo or have a role in Spider-Man four and, or um, uh, Tom Holland coming into the Daredevil series to kind of take that continuation on there. Um, so, you know, I'm, I am looking forward to that. I hope that some of these things come to fruition. I hope that they're done well. Uh, the SAG after strike sucks. Like, let's be honest. Um, we, we, I, I know I support the actors and writers that are doing it because there's some pretty key reasons that, um, that they're striking. And I think that they, they have some attention that's paid that needs to be paid to some of these issues, like with AI and, and different stuff like that. And the, the way that they're trying to do the extras, but, but overall, man, I think long story short, we are tepid a little bit on where the MCU is going. Very well could have some really good properties coming up to end out phase five. Um, but overall, letter grade, what do you, what do you kind of, what's your expectation for, for Marvel? Are, are they going to have a passing grade? Is it kind of just be like a 2.0? What, what are you looking at? Marvel was an A up until Endgame. It's became a C- minus since. And going forward, I'm hoping for a B-. minus. But it's going to take a lot of improvement to get me there. And I don't think one or two films yeah. will save it or series. Because even when they're doing the series, yeah. like we said, they're just not sticking landing or it's bad writing or not. I hope the strike ends soon. Um, you know, we want to bring that back because I don't want it to kill everything, too. Um, it just seems like bad timing. But yeah. we'll see what happens. What about you? I think uh, your C- minus is probably probably on par. I think I'm probably a, a C- minus as well candidly i you know as we go forward i would i don't i don't need to go from a c minus to an a like i'd love to but let's start making some improvements there you know let's go from a c minus to a c let's go from a c to a c plus let's go from a c plus to a b minus etc so forth because they've really dug themselves a hole and i'd like to see them dig out because i do love these characters i know you love these characters too we grew up reading about these characters and you know imagining these characters what they would be like in real life and 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 you know now we have them on the big screen and I'd really like to see that some of these come to fruition and, and go from there. But as as uh, you and I have kind of illustrated here, I don't know how positive I can be going forward aside from maybe, you know, Deadpool and, and, and Daredevil for now. But well, with that, man, we've had a pretty good talk here tonight. Um, I always love talking Marvel shit with you. Somehow we always end up on the same page, even when we disagree. So but with that, man, what do you got for me? Thanks for all the dirty talk. and Come back, and get sanitized. <laughs>